Hey and welcome everyone to our video tutorial. My name is Ned and in today's video we're going to learn how to build a table inside Caspio and summarize some of the data types when designing a table. In Caspio when you're building an application the starting point is always going to be the tables object. Tables are the foundation of any app that you develop and that's where all of your data is going to reside. So to build a table it's very simple. We click on the create table button and then we need to list down the fields that we want to collect inside that table. Now for my use case today, I'm building a patient portal demo. So I need to have the fields that are going to be patient related. So to start off with, I'm going to add my very first field patient ID. Designing your tables, the very first field, you should always have a unique field at the very top. It's also referred to as a primary key in the database, and it's going to be used to uniquely identify each row inside a table when you're adding data. Now for my data type, you're going to be able to see a slew of options on how I can configure that specific field, patient ID. You will notice that Caspio gives us four different ID types that we can automatically generate. I'm going to choose GUID for this use case, and you will see how it's going to be a unique field. Which means every time I add a new patient to this table, that patient is going to be associated with a unique ID. Underneath the patient ID, we're going to add first name. Let's also add last name because that's the information I need to collect for my patients. And I'm going to choose for my data type text 255 because I don't suppose that the first name or the last name will ever exceed 255 characters. Underneath last name, let's also have full name. I recommend in your tables, if you do have names, is to create three fields, first name, last name, and full name to concatenate both the first name and last name together in its own field. And for the data type, we're going to choose formula data type. Click on the edit link to the right. And then you're going to insert both the first name and last name side by side. So we add these fields as parameters. And in between the first and last name, a little bit of syntax is needed here. We're going to add a plus sign, space, and in parentheses, we add a one and another plus sign. This creates one space between the first and last name. We hit apply to save our changes. The reason why I recommend doing this is, let's say sometimes you're sending an email, you may want to just address the patient by their first name, but there are other use cases where you may want to combine the first and last name together in its own field and use that throughout your application. Underneath full name, let's also have patient's email. Maybe we want to collect the patient's phone number. Let's also have patient notes. Now, if we're dealing with notes, we know that we want to have more than 255 characters, so we may select text 64,000 which gives us long text and up to 64,000 characters. We may also want to collect the medical history for each patient. So let's call this field medical history for now. And then later on, you can manipulate that field name and change it to something more descriptive if you'd like. For my data type, I'm going to choose something that's called list string. When you choose list string, it gives us the ability to have multiple options per field. So if you look here to the right, we see these default values. We're going to remove those and replace those with medical history. So maybe we're dealing with asthma. Maybe we have a history of high blood pressure. Or maybe we have some form of cancer. And these are all going to turn into checkboxes when building your forms. Underneath medical history, maybe we want to have insurance provider. Perhaps we want to have medical ID. Now let's say you have a document that you want to upload for a patient. Let's just call this document. And for the data type, we're going to choose file data type. This allows us to upload a document, maybe a Word document or a PDF. Next, let's include some date fields. So perhaps we want to have date added. And we're going to choose timestamp. And we want to stamp on insert which means every time you add a patient to this table via a form, or if you add them directly inside a table, we're automatically going to stamp the date and time when that patient was added. Let's also have date updated. We also want to keep track of when that information was updated. Again, we're going to use a timestamp data type. And instead of stamp on insert, we're going to stamp on update. If you want to turn this into a self-registration form on the web where you allow patients to self-register, be able to log in and see their medical history, you could also add a password field, which is going to be encrypted. 
So when they sign up, they create their own password and then they're able to log in maybe with their email and password combination. And then they're going to be able to see their medical history, their messages, their labs, or anything else that you include inside this patient portal application. So just to quickly summarize some of these other data types that we have, we have number, integer, and currency. So if you're dealing with numerical values, let's say you're building a sales CRM, or in some use cases, you want to collect the patient's weight, height, so that you can perform calculations at a later time. We have a yes and no, it's a Boolean. So if you want to turn a field into a checkbox, you can do that. We have list number and list date. Also allows you to select multiple options per field. And finally, we have the formula data type, which we did cover just a moment ago. But if I go into a little bit more detail on the formula data type, you will see that we have a lot of different math functions that we can include when computing values. We can also do text for string manipulation and date and time if you wanted to calculate, let's say, how many days have passed since somebody signed up for an account. Once you made your changes, you can either cancel or hit apply. And when finished, the last step is simply to save the table Give it a name. So let's call this demo patient information. Hit finish. And we have our very first database table. From here, you can start building forms and reports on top of this table, or you can continue building additional tables that will complement your application. Thanks for watching our video. I hope that you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.